How many of you have ever been on a diet? I know I know what you're thinking. What's this kid talking about? He looks like he's never been on a diet and doesn't need to be on one. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I have been on a diet. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> Around the sixth grade, I stopped swimming competitively. And since I wasn't swimming an hour three days a week, neither was I gaining any type of exercise. As you would think, I started gaining some weight. And again, you're thinking, well, Nicholas, you're around like 13. You probably only gained five pounds. Well, in reality, I gained 25 pounds. Now, let me tell you, 25 pounds can be a lot of weight for this little frame. <laughs> I had trouble running because I had become short of breath, and I had a constant fear I'd get made fun of at school. Here's a picture of me at my heaviest. I realized I had to make some changes to my eating habits and my lifestyle just overall. So, I started playing sports during school, and during lunch I started eating salads and sometimes a normal lunch. Partly because my parents blocked me off from eating all the chips, cookies, all the all the My mentor, Mrs. Anderson, kind of went through the same thing as me. My mentor, Mrs. Anderson, swam in high school, and then when she stopped, she was always on herself about her diet. About a year and a half ago, she joined Weight Watchers and she lost 60 pounds. My favorite quote from my mentor is, she believed she could, so she did. We both believed we could lose our weight, so we did. More than 50% of America is overweight. Look at the person to your left. <laughs> now look at the person to your right. If it's not them, I'm sorry, but it's you. <laughs> you can figure out if you're overweight or obese by finding out your BMI or your body mass index. You can calculate your BMI by your kilograms divided by your meter squared. So pretty much your weight divided by your height. A healthy BMI is 19 to 25, overweight is 25 to 30, and obese is 30 and above. But let's do a little experiment. Around the beginning of sixth grade through like seventh grade, I was 68 kilos, which is 150 pounds. I was about 5'2", 5'3", so 1.6 meters. You put this into the formula, I had a BMI of 26, so yes, I was overweight. The main reason everyone struggles with eating healthy is because eating junk food is just so much more convenient. It costs less and it takes less time. But is it really more convenient? All right, I'm about to go into my inner math teacher. I went to a variety of fast food places near me, and I figured out the average burger combo is $7.50. And for a family of four, that's $30. Whereas making it yourself for a family of four is only $21. But you're probably wondering, how did I get to $21? Yeah. I went to a variety of fast, no. I listed everything you need to make a burger at market price. And then you're probably wondering, well, what about the missing fries? We all try to eat healthier, so we just did the fries, and we use the extra lettuce to make a side salad. And you can't have a salad without tomatoes. Tomatoes are $1.49 a pound, and that brings up the total of $22.50. That's only $22.50 the first time, because you have to buy condiments such as ketchup. The second time you buy it, it's only going to be $5.69, because the buns come in a package of two, and all you have to do is buy the meat. You also need to be conscious about what you eat. We all know, or at least have an idea about what's healthy. We all know if you eat something salty, later that day you won't feel so good, and you'll have a chance to gain something like high blood pressure. But if you eat something healthy, you won't have a chance of getting anything bad, like diabetes, heart problems, clogged arteries, the list just goes on. How many of you have seen the 2004 document documentary called Super Size Me? Okay, so not that many of you guys have. <laughs> In this documentary, Morgan Spurtlock eats three burgers a day for 30 days. And at the end of it all, he's gained 24 pounds, has crazy cholesterol levels, and looks pretty bad in his before and after pictures. <laughs> Mentally, replace his face with yours. And I'm not telling you to remove meat from your life. According to the U.S. Department of Agriculture, they recommend two daily portions of fish, chicken, 
nuts, and a moderate ration of red meat. Because your body needs protein, you just need to be smart about how you eat it by choosing baked over fried. And I'm not saying you can't treat yourself. I, for one, treat myself with this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it's completely fine. It's completely fine to treat yourself. I think if you eat 80% healthy and 20% unhealthy, that's completely fine. Because always eating healthy can be really daunting. And that 20% is just when you treat yourself for being good. You also need to beat the distractions. How many of you have ever gone to the movie theater, bought a bowl of popcorn, and before the movie's even started, it's already gone? <laughs> yeah, that's everyone in this room. Distracted eating happens when we don't really focus on how fast the food is going into our mouth. It happens at Thanksgiving dinner, at the movies, or when you're just sitting around the house bored with nothing else to do and just watching TV. For me, it was just when I was just sitting around the house watching TV. So I would just eat without really focusing about how much food was going into my mouth. What, but what category do you fall into? The supersize me gain 24 pounds category? Or I want to live a healthier, longer life with just simply being able to pull up my pants without a tug of war life. <laughs> when you leave here today, I want you to consider making healthier options. It doesn't all have to be at once. It can just be a little bit at a time. Like choosing fruit over chips when you get home for a snack. And just slowly stop trying to eat candy all the time. Small steps towards a healthier, longer lifestyle. Down with the distractions and up with the health. Thank you.